In this episode we will build a forest habitat for the Therizinosaurus as well as use a glitch to make a natural lagoon with natural edges. And with that said, hey guys Legion here and welcome back to Jurassic Evergreen Park. And I hope you guys are going to enjoy this episode where I built, a, as I said, a lagoon using the newly discovered lagoon glitch to get decorations and uh, sort of rocks and everything like that into the lagoon. And if you want to see more awesome builds like this on my channel, of course subscribe and leave a like on the video as well. In the last episode I already finished off with preparing uh, the area for this episode, uh, placing the lagoon in the back of the habitat that I wanted to do. I had the idea, like I already mentioned, to build for a carnivore, but I ended up going instead for the Therizinosaurus because I think it's a better fit for the habitat uh, I de decided to do. Uh, the idea for that was sort of to have like a forested habitat, pretty densely forested, and the uh, ma mainly uh, the thing I wanted to do differently is terrain elevation because usually I have like a few hills or mountains in my habitats that like separate little areas but for this habitat I decided to have like the terrain go going higher and being quite steep towards the back and I think that makes all, uh, you know makes a really cool look and I think the Therizinosaurus fits perfectly in that sort of habitat and this habitat, um, instead of being a usual temperate biome, I decided to mix the um, alpine trees and also the and also the sort of swampy alpine trees from the Biosyn map and from those uh, foliage uh, from that from that foliage set with the temperate trees, and to sort of make like a mixed forest. And um, the way, uh, the reason that I use those uh, swampy uh, trees from the Biosyn set is because there are some. Uh, trees that are not in the alpine set that have uh, some really nice shapes and I want to use those and uh, Yeah, so they are, have like they have like a bit of swamp Swampiness at the bottom, but I think that's why not really uh, too noticeable and doesn't really turn the habitat into like a swamp It's still more of a forest if you guys haven't heard about the lagoon glitch yet um, Evo covered it on her channel. It was originally discovered by Cretaceous containment which is a YouTube channel who does quite a lot of glitch hunting and a lot of videos on new Jurassic World Evolution 2 glitches and sort of tricking out the game and trying to glitch things over one another. And uh, so I would highly recommend you guys to subscribe to his channel to always, you know, see new glitch videos. And I've also been, you know, in contact with him and some couple other people about, you know, new glitches in Evolution 2. So if we got, if we guys together find anything new, uh, I'm gonna tell you guys right away probably in a video and maybe even do a speed build with it if it's like a cool glitch. So to understand how this glitch works, you have to sort of uh, know that in this um, game, the hitboxes don't really work as uh, sort of domes, as, as hitboxes that go all the way from the top and bottom of the map, uh, you know, around the decoration. They're more sort of uh, spheric shapes, and uh, previously with that uh, we were able to do a rock, you know, uh, overlap some of the rocks into one another using elevation. Uh, but now a new glitch is uh, basically you build your lagoon and then you remove one of the segments and where that segment was uh, you're going to erase the terrain. Uh, then you can place some decorations on there that actually work with the terrain elevation. So when you elevate the terrain under them they go up and down. Uh, not all of the decorations do that, but like the planters, uh, rocks and also the trees do that. And I think uh, like also the amber planters and stuff like that. Uh, most of you guys probably already know that. And also the concrete barriers as well. Uh, so that's quite nice. Um, yeah, what I uh, decided to do with that is two different things. Um, uh, to have one a natural lagoon edge and one little... A circle of decorations and nature in the middle of the lagoon and yeah once you have placed your stuff on uh, that elevation you're going to um, yeah you're, go you're going to uh, let it stay elevated and then you can place the lagoon again if you you know it's this is just like a description uh, if you really want to know how it works and want to see it done in action you're going to have to check out uh, either Cretaceous Containment's channel or Evolution Square's video I didn't record the parts of me doing that because, you know, glitches usually take quite a bit of time and with this, you know, first I had to like check a lot, like, you know, I, I had to do a lot of try and error and check um, if uh, that would actually work, if I could actually still place the lagoon and glitch the stuff, um, you know, how I was uh, using the decorations. Uh, so yeah, like I already said, I did like a little circle uh, lined with rocks, some bushes, 
uh, some of the tropical ferns, um, one of my favorite techniques, and like a tree in the middle as sort of like a um, round uh, section in the lagoon and like a little cutout. I think that looks quite nice. Then I also did a natural lagoon edge, which is probably one of the coolest ways to use this glitch. And then you can use uh, like rocks and bushes and trees uh, on top of the lagoon and make it look uh, like, the uh, like the lagoon has a natural edge, which is something we've wanted for quite a long time uh, out of this game. Uh, so yeah, that looks quite nice. Also did that off cam and uh, it was sort of weird, but my game it just sort of uh, crashed like two times uh, whilst I was building that. It's um, a little weird. Um, I also had another crash while building and that happened uh, for me you know, deleting a bush or something uh, that was near the lagoon. And when I do that, apparently sometimes it just decides to crash my game. Um, but yeah, it ended up working and I just had to save it a couple of times the game. And uh, yeah, so I don't think that's because of the lag of the park. Even though the park is getting a bit laggy, so I decided uh, I decided to turn down my graphics settings to make it a bit more uh, enjoyable, enjoyable, <laughs> enjoyable for me to build. Um, but uh, usually, you know, one of the problems with Evolution 2, which I really want fixed, probably in the future I really wish that Frontier would do something about that, is, is that when you have a big park with a lot of uh, items and that is sort of getting laggy, and when you are in the path tool, uh, the whole path tool is really, really hard to use. It's, it's really laggy and yeah, it's, it's just really annoying to build uh, path stuff like that, especially if you want to do like path art, um, it, it becomes a lot harder. And I don't know if you guys know what I mean, but especially also when recording at the same time, uh, that really happens and uh, my performance just gets a lot worse, uh, specifically in the path system. So yeah, this glitch is really, really cool. Probably one of the best ones we've ever found. The monorail glitch, I think, was always like the best glitch, um, in my opinion, in this game uh, that we ever got. I think the dinosaurs and aviaries is really cool. Um, but it's not really that useful because usually you would have your dinosaurs not in aviaries um, it's only really useful for like biodomes if you want to do something like that but then it's like really cool and the monorail glitch you know I've been able to use that for a lot of really cool things especially in my tropical park um, that that was one that I, that I did on YouTube I did like the habitat for the uh, dreadnoughts with the monorail passage and I also did like uh, other areas where I just use the monorail for decoration or like a bridge, like in the Allosaurus habitat in this park even. Uh, the monorail glitch is really cool. And I think that there, um, this new glitch for the lagoons will open a lot, a lot of possibilities for us to do because we can basically just do little decoration sections inside of the lagoon, in the middle of the lagoon. We can have uh, bridges, across, uh, like not real bridges, but sort of fake bridges that um, just build something that looks like a bridge uh, through the lagoon. You can have like natural edges, like there are a lot of possibilities with this glitch. And yeah, I think it's really exciting uh, to... Uh, use some more of that and in the future just build cooler lagoons as well as you can do like caves uh, in your lagoons you can like um, do one of the areas uh, with rocks in the ceiling you can make, can make like a rock ceiling and yeah for example for like a dark lost or something that would be really cool uh, yeah now we just really got a hope for frontier to add a kelp brush or something like that in a future update to the lagoons but speaking of future updates, actually, uh, I recently did a community post asking you guys uh, what packs you think are the most likely for us to get in the future. Um, I asked like a Cretaceous Herbivore pack, a Jurassic Era pack, a, um, a Flying Species pack or like an Asian Species pack. Like the Asian Species pack was kind of random, but I think it's like Asia is one of the areas where we could like, uh, like get a regional um, species pack from. Um, for example, the Microceratus, uh, I think, is an Asian species, so we could get it in an Asian pack. And a lot of people, I think most people, um, answered uh, that a flying pack is the most likely thing. Uh, sort of in contrast to the uh, marine species pack, we're going to also get a flying species pack. I think that that is pretty likely. Um, but I think what's also really likely, of course, is the Cretaceous Herbivore pack. And I personally would really, really prefer to get a Cretaceous Herbivore pack instead of a flying species pack um, I don't really want to get a flying species pack because I think um, just building for flying species is really boring like example like for example if we were to get a DLC with four flying species I would have to do a video on for each of them uh, building four different areas 
and it would be kind of boring to me. And I think the game really needs some new herbivores, especially from DLCs, since that was a long time ago, since we got the last herbivore. That was the Lystrosaurus, and before that the Alamosaurus, um, and that was both over a year ago. Uh, so yeah, and I think if we do get a Flying Species pack, um, really uh, the thing that that should get in the free update would be a um, would be walking animations for the pterosaurs, uh, as well as like smaller, excuse me, as well as like smaller aviaries for like micro raptors or Achaeopteryx, and also um, like maybe bigger aviaries for something like the Quetzalcoatlus or Hetzigopteryx, because those just feel kind of awkward in uh, the uh, big, smaller aviaries that we currently have in the game. And I've talked a bit about this in a previous video, so I'm not gonna um, talk too long about this, but yeah, that's just my opinion on it. I really want a herbivore pack instead. In general, I'm probably going to be happy with whatever pack we get next. Um, hopefully just the free update alongside it is going to be pretty, pretty good and some new nice stuff to build up packs with. Uh, so yeah, uh, tell me in the comments down below um, it, what you guys think about the update, uh, the next update, uh, what DLC you want to see, what you think we're going to get. And yeah, with that said, I hope you guys enjoyed the speed build, uh, the whole habitat, and also I hope you're going to enjoy the ambience of the habitat, which I think is quite cool in the cinematics. See you guys next one. Bye bye. Enjoy the cinematics.